Good morning, YouTube. Today, I'm going to show you how to take a normal, ordinary helmet and turn it into a moto vlogging style setup, action cam recorder setup. Before we get started, I do want to let you know that this is not going to be a step-by-step how-to guide. I'm going to show you every single step, step-by-step, step, uh, very detailed, but this isn't meant to be a, this is how you do it. Now, motor vlogging setups are completely uh, personalizable and you can change things here and there. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to be doing today is going to apply to multiple helmets, multiple action cams, you name it. But I'm just gonna give you my recommendations of what I have found out has worked for me. I've been motor vlogging for over two years now, so I have a pretty good idea of what I like on my setup and how I like it set up. And I've had uh, good success with it as far as quality and everything goes. So hopefully you can achieve the same results. So to my right here is my old helmets. This is the one I currently use right now. Uh, this is an AGV AX8 Evo. Uh, also links for everything I talk about is gonna be down in the description. Uh, this helmet has held up to pretty much everything I've thrown at. There's nothing that I dislike about this helmet. I just feel like it's time to move on to something new. And that brings me to the Biltwell Lane Splitter. I have already gone ahead and put on the chrome lens here. Uh, this doesn't come stock. But today we're pretty much going to be taking everything off of this helmet or stuff that I bought extra and then putting it onto this helmet. But like I said, this is gonna be applicable to a lot of different helmets, a lot of different products. So let's get started. So the first thing that I like to do on any helmet is to put on a Cena Bluetooth communicator. Now this is definitely not needed for a moto vlogging setup, but it's something that I like to have. Uh, you can do dual vlogs and uh, group rides and talking to each other and everything like that. Uh, and it makes riding for me a little bit safer because you're able to talk to everyone around you, have constant communication with the group. But as you can see, it does mount actually onto the helmet. So before I do that, I'm actually gonna lay down my graphics. Now it's been scientifically proven that graphics make you uh, a better rider and they also make you a better moto vlogger. Don't fact check that, just believe me. So today we've got all the graphics that we'll be putting on this new Beltwell helmet. Now, before you ask, yes, I do make these. Yes, we can do custom stuff for you. Information for that down in the description. All right, so we are back. All the graphics are applied on both sides. Here, also got my sponsors on the back, shout out. I know I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was going to go over installing the Cena. I'm actually gonna make a completely separate video over that since it is somewhat of an in-depth process. Uh, but I will say, very easy on this helmet. The easiest one I've installed by far, and that was my fifth, sixth. So, uh, shout out Biltwell, made it extremely easy to install that. But now moving on to the actual moto vlog portion. Now, for the moto vlog, you really only need two things. That is an action camera and a microphone. Now, this action camera here is the GoPro Hero 4. Uh, it's kind of outdated at this point, but for moto vlogging, I still believe that it is the best camera around. Specifically, this is the moto, or I'm sorry, this is the GoPro Hero 4 Silver. So it has the screen, and I'm gonna go in depth about the mount here in just a second as well. Uh, but the microphone that I use is the Sony ECM CS3. Now, a lot of people use this mic. Um, I have one, this is the one I'm recording on right now. I have one in this helmet. Miss, Bi Miss Biker Bird has one. Uh, Kid has one. Roblox has one. Literally every single one of my guys runs this microphone. I've used the same one on this helmet for over two years now, has never given me a single issue. So I live and die by this microphone. I absolutely love it. So let me bring you in here to the mount so we can go over that real quick. Now, as you can see, uh, this mount is not your standard GoPro mount. This is a, well, it is, and but it isn't. This is made up of a combination of the uh, chin mount as well as some other random pieces. I'm hoping I'm getting you a good enough shot where you can actually see kind of what's going on here. So your really key component is to make sure that you have uh, three axes axi, axes. Uh, <laughs> so for example, this way, this way and this way. And um, these are not your standard GoPro screws. These are M8, I believe. I'll link them down in the description. That way you get these exact ones. I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting these because you're able to, one, torque them down really good to where it's not going to move around on you. And two, it just cleans up the whole look. Because imagine if you had thumb screws sticking out 
where every single one of these screws is, it would be ridiculous. The only thumb screw I keep is this one because that allows you to take the camera on and off the mount. And with this general setup, you're able to put this on a lot of helmets. Now, for example, this helmet right here has the vents up front, so you wouldn't be able to do a standard chin mount. That's why I always like going off on the side because pretty much every helmet you see is gonna have the side clear. Now, for this particular helmet, it's gonna be very easy because this portion right here, this flat spot fits the mount perfectly. So basically what we're gonna be doing is installing a uh, quick connect here and then just adjusting the camera. And that's gonna be pretty simple. So in almost every single GoPro kit, whether it be a cheap Amazon knockoff or the official thing, you're gonna have these style of stick on clips. Now, some of them do have a curve. Let me see if I can uh, get you a close up here. So you can see this one kind of has a curve to it while this one is straight. With this being a straighter surface, I'm going to use the straight mount and then the one that we'll be putting on the back later, I'll go ahead and utilize the curved mount. But as you can see, these have already been used. These already have the sticky on them. Also, if you buy the official GoPro stuff on the back of the red tape, you'll see 3M. That stuff is good. Go ahead, peel that off, stick it right on there clean your surface like we talked about earlier. But if it is a knockoff, it's not gonna, it's gonna have red tape back here, but it's not gonna have anything on it. Don't use that stuff. Simply just peel it off and replace it with, with 3M. This stuff I'm peeling off right now is 3M, so it's a lot harder to get off than the other stuff. Ugh. If you have a hard time getting it off, some heat always does the trick. This stuff on this one is the cheap stuff. So as you can see, it comes off like putty. Very easy to get off. It's not what you want holding on your camera. Completely different stuff right there. Now, if you get 3M tape, it's gonna come in a roll like this. The place I always go is, is AutoZone. I'm sure you can get a lot of places, but this is the automotive grade. This is the stuff that they use to stick on emblems, uh, chrome siding, stuff like that. And then what you do with that is just cut some, some strips to size and stick them on to the, uh, the, the mount here. All right, so let me get a close up here of what we're talking about. So this is the uh, top of the quick mount plate. And then you can see we've just layered it with 3M tape. It does not have to be pretty, just get as much coverage as you can. And then you can test your mount. So for us, since we have a nice flat surface, we're not gonna have any gaps or issues with it. It's pretty much gonna be sitting like so. We got a little bit of overhang on the back. That's fine, that's no big deal. Uh, but for example, if you were placing it on a curved surface, say for example, if this was your, the front of your helmet, you see little gaps on the sides, on the front and the back, you want to fill those um, because at that point, only about half of your mount is touching. Simply just double layer the uh, double sided tape on either side so it sits flat. That way you've got the at most adhesive touching the helmet as possible. But thankfully we don't have that issue, so we're just gonna go ahead and peel this off and stick it on here. I will say this stuff is extremely hard to get off at room temperature with just your fingers. Highly recommend heating it up with a hair dryer or a heat gun and then pulling it off with uh, an X-Acto knife. Doesn't take a lot of heat, especially if you're using a heat gun. You'll see the, uh, the red backing kind of change shape. That's when it uh, has released. Now, a, uh, a common myth with this stuff is that if you heat it up, it um, promotes the adhesive. That's not exactly true. This type of adhesive is actually a pressure sensitive adhesive. So when we go ahead and put this stuff on, you really want to push down with as much pressure as you can for about 20 to 30 seconds. Also, what I like to do is mount up my mount to kind of uh, get it in the right place first. That way you kind of have an idea of where you want to put it. That looks good to me. So I'm going to give a little press and then take off this mount so I can get a better uh, handle on it. And then we're really going to crack down on this. <sighs> All right, so that should do it. Now this thing is going to be on here for as long as you want it to. <laughs> really, you really have to uh, give these things a lot of force for them to come off. All right, now that's on, we can go ahead and put our mount on and start getting that adjusted. So go ahead and clip it on. This one is actually not going to take a lot of adjustment at all. With this being a hex key, uh, th these bolts, it is a little bit more inconvenient to, uh, to do any adjustments, but you're gonna do them once and they're gonna be done. So for me, I like to loosen all axis at one time. Uh, so for example, I'm doing 
Oh, I'm kind of doing two at the same time here, but you kind of get the idea. And you want to not center the camera. I know a lot of people will center the camera. I like to center the lens of the camera because that's what's actually going to be, you know, showing the footage. And then once you have it close to where you want, you can go ahead and uh, crank down the connectors, making sure that they don't uh, move too much while you're torquing them down. And also check to make sure that it's level. All right, so our camera is on. Let me get you a close up so you can get a better idea of what everything looks like. So hopefully with this angle here, you're able to kind of see uh, all the different parts and uh, be able to kind of fashion up one of your own here. Like I said, this piece right here is probably the most crucial, this curved J mount. I believe it's called a J mount. And then, like I said, lens as close to center as possible without looking super goofy. And we are all good on the mount. So next what we're gonna do is move on to mounting the microphone, which is a crucial part that a lot of people do not do a good job on. So we'll go ahead and cut this open, or just open it. All right, and the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and uh, break this plastic clip off, unless you're gonna be using it for something else. Uh, but for me, it just gets in the way and makes our mounting spot a little bit unaccessible, so. All right. So now that that's broken off, you're gonna have a nice clean surface. Well, clean-ish. You see it has a flat spot on one side. And what we're gonna be doing with that is filling it full of double-sided tape. But first, we have to get ourselves a little bit of wind protection. And that's gonna come in the form of some dead cats or a dead cat. Not an actual deceased feline, but uh, this little furry material here. This is going to cut down on your wind noise substantially, but we're going to do a little bit of dissecting on this thing to make it work with the, uh, the microphone here. So these specific dead cats, of course, will be down in the description. Uh, they come with this little clip here, and if you're using it like on a, a t-shirt or something, that works perfectly, but for our application, it actually just kind of gets in the way. So we're going to go ahead and cut that off. And then what we're also going to be doing is going to be cutting the dead cat up one side. There we go. And basically what we want to do is make it lay out flat like this. So it was rolled up. Basically what we're doing is taking it and rolling it out like so. All right, and now we're going to cover the uh, entire microphone in double-sided tape, aside from this part and this part, because this is where the audio actually goes in. So pretty much all of the silver spots we're going to cover in double-sided tape. All right, so after you're done, you should have something that looks basically like this. Of course, we still have the backing on the double-sided tape. Uh, with the wire sticking out the right side. Now this is uh, this orientation is gonna be important later, so pay attention to how the wire is sticking out the right side. Now what we're going to do is remove the backing from the double-sided tape, and then we're going to lie the uh, dead cat sideways, so it's meant to go on like this, but we're actually gonna be wrapping it like this to wrap around the microphone like so. Also, it's very important that once you get the, uh, the backing off to not touch the double-sided tape. Um, that's just gonna get oil from your hands all over it. It's gonna make it not stick nearly as well. Now, it's really important when you're putting this dead cat on that you get the center of the dead cat on the center of the microphone. So what I do is I fold it up like this and that makes it a lot easier to judge where the center is. Now, before you wrap it all the way around the microphone, Wrap it about halfway and uh, give it a couple good presses. But before we finalize the wrapping all the way around, we're actually gonna put the microphone in the helmet and then we're gonna kind of wrap it into the gaps of um, once, once it's installed. All right, so once that dead cat is nice and installed on half of it, we can go ahead and put it in the helmet. Now, what you're gonna wanna do, let me get the, uh, the close-up shot here. What you're gonna to wanna to do is take out your uh, right cheek pad. Now this is usually pretty easy. It's usually just a couple snaps and then the pad will, will fold out like so. Um, basically from there, what we're gonna to wanna to do is place the microphone. Like I said earlier, the orientation is very important. Okay, hold on, got my wires all tangled up here. 
wire sticking out the right side. What you're gonna wanna do is place it right up against the corner of the right cheek. Give me one second and I'll show you where I'm talking about here. So right here where this uh, cheek pad ends, you're gonna wanna place it facing up and down, not left and right like it's supposed to be used. I'll explain that later in a second with the wire running in between these two clips here. So just place it right here and uh, kind of in between halfway in between the visor and the bottom of the helmet. Right there and then press hard, get that adhesive to activate. All right, and now that that is uh, nice and... All right, sorry, I had to use uh, both hands there for a little bit, uh, but it's on there, nice and tight. Ah! Shit. All right, well, not sticking to this material here. So we're gonna have to get a little bit more creative when nothing else will stick, super glue is your answer. All right, so I ended up using some uh, JB Weld. To your close up of what I used, plastic bonder. This stuff has worked very well for me in the past. Probably overkill for most of these applications, but uh, due to the uh, rubbery material up front, I could not get that double-sided tape to stick. So uh, depending on if yours is uh, hard or rubbery, you might have to use some uh, other options. Now, moving on while that cures, we're gonna go ahead and talk about power. Now, if you've noticed, I'm recording right now with my GoPro attached to this power bank. I actually run this power bank off the back of my helmet through this cable right here. What this cable is, is this cable right here, uh, is a just basically a USB to the back of the GoPro. Now we can't use the side, the normal power, because that's where our microphone is gonna end up plugging into. A lot of people do not like having a big giant power bank hanging off the back of their helmet. I do not blame you. Um, but I would highly recommend doing some sort of continuous power setup, whether it be this, or if you use the Hero 5 and the Hero 6, you can plug directly into the mic adapter and use that. But having to change out GoPro batteries really throws a wrench in your plans when you're motovlogging. This is probably the best change on my motovlog setup that I've ever done. Now, if you're gonna be using the Hero 4 like I am, you will need to modify your housing a little bit and I'll show you that right now. So this is a standard uh, GoPro housing. I know it's red, all it is is colored, but as you can see, it does have the uh, side cut out so you can access your uh, microphone jack as well as your SD card. Now, if you look towards the back, this is where mine is modified. We need to access this port. So what I did was simply take a Dremel and cut that out. Now, if you don't have a side uh, window, you can also just cut that out with a Dremel as well, or you can just buy one. They're not that expensive. I think they're like $13 or something on Amazon. But uh, for this, you do have to modify with a Dremel or some sort of cutting tool to get that hole out of there. But there is a problem with this cable straight from the, the company. If you look here, it's I think 10 feet long or six foot long, something like that. Obviously going to be overkill running from here to here. But like I mentioned earlier, if you don't want it hanging out the back of your helmet, I would recommend this link because that's perfect link to run it into a, uh, a vest pocket or even a pocket on your pants or maybe even if you've got like a, a bar bag or something or a tank bag, you can run it to in there as well. But uh, for this uh, example, I am gonna continue having it on my helmet. So I am going to be running this cable up and through um, the, uh, the soft pads in the helmet. And when you're running this cord, you basically just wanna make sure that you uh, run it up behind the, the button snaps. That way the button snaps actually hold on, or will contain that cord within the helmet and won't allow it to, uh, to fall out the sides or anything like that. I think I'm gonna go with that setup there. It's gonna look funky regardless, so you just gotta have to uh, minimize the funkiness and make sure that you're able to take it off the clip and access the uh, USB and the button here. So I think that spot right there is gonna be best for me. So once again, we're just gonna be covering this mount with the double-sided tape and sticking it on the helmet. Now once again, just stick it where you want it and press down hard. All right, now we're gonna move on back to the microphone now that the uh, power is hooked up. Uh, essentially, it's pretty easy from here. All you have to do is take your um, microphone, 3.5 millimeter, plug it into the GoPro adapter, and then um, contain the wires within the cheek pad, which I'll show you how to do here in a second. 
First, what you wanna do is put your camera back on. That way you know where everything is running to. It makes it a little bit easier to get everything cleaned up. So first what I'm gonna do is run the power to here. That way uh, that is hooked up. And then basically what you're gonna do is just bunch all of the microphone cable that you have left over after you hook it up into that right cheek pad. So that is basically how it would sit. You don't want a lot of wire hanging out. That is basically what you'd be left with. Uh, a trick that I like to do with these wires, I like to get zip ties and zip tie the power and the audio cable together and then zip tie that to the GoPro mount. And then once everything is all tucked in, just reinstall your right cheek pad and make sure everything's all cleaned up. All right, folks, and there you have it. There is a setup. Uh, one final thing that you, would, that you should do is uh, do a final uh, test fit to make sure none of your wires have bunched up uh, behind here. That can cause uh, quite a bit of pain <laughs> after uh, a long ride. Definitely speaking from experience on this one. Also keep in mind this helmet is not broken in either, so this might be a little painful regardless. Ah, no, actually, actually all fits nice and good. And then uh, one thing you wanna look out for, you can't really tell on this until you're on a bike, is uh, make sure you get into a riding position and then make sure your camera is facing perpendicular uh, to the ground, that way you're getting the best view possible. So I do feel a little bit of bunching, but it's definitely not extreme. Maybe just a little bit of adjustment here and there. But then uh, one thing I did not point out when I installed the uh, dead cat is that a lot of the excess material on the front of the dead cat can be cut off. So you can take it and give the dead cat a little haircut here. Wow, I got the world's worst scissors right now. The reason that this is excessive is because the microphone is only on the top and the bottom. You don't need that stuff on the sides. Oh, yeah, that's much better. All right, folks, so there you have it. Your Moto Vlog how to. If I leave you with one thing, if you didn't listen to anything else in this video, please listen to this. Please, for the love of God, go test your setup. Don't go out and do a two or three hour ride and then get back and realize that something wasn't plugged in or something got shorted out or what have you. Go and test your, your setup. Drive around the neighborhood for a couple, maybe five, 10 minutes, do some talking. Make sure that it's working out for you. Also, test in different environments, highways, cities, stop and go. That way you know where the wind is hitting and at uh, what you can do to try to make that audio better. Other than that, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I will answer them as soon as I possibly can. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and punch that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.